And so if I can move us on to the staffing model, we came to an agreement about what should your core staff look like. So initially, the core staff would be um, getting a finance person on, and we won't talk about titles at this point. Yeah. Um, uh, getting somebody in to manage day-to-day -day operations, that could also be an HR person, and that's pretty much what happened. And um, an IT person um, who can help address things quickly rather than have it always being outsourced. We created the job descriptions for that, and then um, her HR person went out and did some recruiting. Another thing that we did is initial screens of applicants. Now, ordinarily, we would never do that. Yeah. But this was a, such a place in the business that I personally found it hard not to be able to provide some help, extra no. help to beyond. This point, I remember when I spoke with Tomoko, she told me that um, the way she would hire, she'd meet somebody, she'd like them and say, okay, start tomorrow. And didn't seem like she had a lot of experience in hiring, didn't have best practices. And now where you said, you know, stop this outsourcing, let's bring in these five people, I would imagine that would have been a challenge for her. So are all the things that you did intended to help her to figure out the best way to hire? Yes. She told us the same thing that she said to you is I meet people, I get excited, we have a nice conversation and then I hired them and it's not the best way for me to do it. The person who became her human resources asked me if I thought she would be a good fit. So I met with her and I looked at her background and as it turned out, she was way more competent and had way more experience. And so I feel that because of that, letting go and letting um, the HR person do what she needed to do, that they moved along pretty well.